joined now by Kate Matsudaira, advisor at Distilly. Kate, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, thank you, Mac. I'm excited to be here. Do uh, software processes like Waterfall and Agile map to data projects? I think that they can, but I, it really depends on the data projects. I, when you're out to answer a specific question, like I want to you know, see if this exists in the data, I think those tend to be more tractable. Mm -hmm. But uh, recently, the team that I was managing, we were doing a lot more R&D. And so in those cases, it didn't map as well because there aren't necessarily defined mm. outcomes. Mm -hmm. Things are much more ambiguous. And that presents uh, some really interesting challenges um, compared to, you know, kind of traditional software where you have this, you know, design, build, test, deploy. Right. Um, what, are, what are some of the most common pain points that you're seeing with data projects? Are there things that you see across the board? Um, I think that one of the things like we struggled a lot with that uh, we worked really hard is, is one that it's hard to understand necessarily what they're doing. It's very, uh, data science is still really new mm -hmm. and a lot of, one of the biggest things that we did to kind of help bring clarity was focus on what, what actually happens, right? So how do you start the process with like data collection and do you have the right data? And then moving on to analyzing the data and do you have the right tools? And then once you have the right tools, you know, are you actually, uh, when you do the experiments and results, how are you managing the output of that data? And how are you managing like your golden data sets that you're mm -hmm. using to kind of train models and things like that? So I think there isn't a lot of best practices and in infrastructure. So you're kind of flying by the seat kind of your pants your own, in, a no. later, in a lot of ways. Right, yeah. right. Uh, when a uh, organization is looking to take on a data project, what are some of the first steps you'd recommend they address? Well, I think the first one is really to kind of get clear around what you're trying to do. Mm. Um, the second thing, you know, because things are, especially with R&D, very, they don't always have, you know, this is what we're trying to do or this is even possible. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important to, you know, analyze your goals and make sure you have a really clear objective. Then it's really about making sure that do you have the right data and the right information to do it? Do you need manual data and how, and you know, because it, <laughs> one to two weeks of a data miner's time can buy you a whole lot of mechanical yeah, turf, sure, right? Sure. So do you have the right data? And then once you um, kind of make all those decisions, I think it's really important to have kind of fast iteration and the notion mm. of failing fast and looking at those results a lot earlier. Um, I've seen a lot of people kind of, a data, pers a data miner might start working on something and then it, they're not getting the results they want, so they keep trying and keep trying, and if you don't bubble that up, it's sometimes really hard to kind of see or make decisions, and, and so I really like to focus on failing fast. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that iteration is in there. Yeah, and making sure that you know, you're, you're going down the right path. Um, and then I think it's also really important as a manager, and I just will throw this in, even though that isn't exactly the question that you asked, it is to make sure that you're rewarding um, the journey. I, mm. And I always talk about this because I feel like with a lot of work, when you find that insight or something great happens, it's very celebratory and, and very positive, but sometimes your hardest problems don't have right answers. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to kind of recognize that and structure the way you manage the work and you manage the team, that the journey is the reward. And, right. and, and so you're not your hardest working, like most talented person doing the di most difficult problems is recognized the same way as right. with the quick wins. Right, right. I imagine that's particularly true when you know, you're know you slogging through data cleanup all the time and yeah, looking, right. going, if I, I just need a win, I just need a win. Right? Yeah, and, and I think it's hard from a business perspective, right? Because you're so focused on how does it impact the business? What are the results? But yeah. sometimes yeah. the results aren't always possible. And so I, I think as a manager and a leader, it's really important to think about it in that way too. Uh, that's a good point. So last question for you. We know that there are a lot of data scientists, uh, but are we at a point yet where we actually have lots of data science teams? You know, I, I think so, but it may not be teams of data scientists. But mm. no data scientist isn't working with other people, helping them with the tools and the infrastructure or, um, I mean, other people, right? There's always other, no one does their work in a vacuum, sure, right? So, right? So there are teams and there are groups of people doing this work. I think uh, tons of teams of just data scientists doing analysis. I, I don't think there's a lot of them yet. Right. <laughs> um, I think, you know, where I was working, it was kind of an exception because we did a lot of R&Ds and this was kind of our business was mm. around predictive models and things like that. So it made sense. Mm -hmm. But I do, um, I think that we're seeing a lot more going that way where people are building data science teams. Um, definitely, I heard a lot of that at the conference. Like after my talk, people are like, I'm building a team. Mm. And, and some of these things are real challenges for us around managing data and things like that. Great. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You bet.